Hi everyone, Snowby here. There are a few games that are on my radar and one has been lurking for quite a while and is hopefully coming to Steam Early Access. They recently had a booth at Gamescon and showcased their first game. Many obviously would never have heard about it, but I think this game has a lot of potential. Humanity Z is an open world, top down zombie survival game that has single player and will have up to four players in a co-op game. It is developed by Yodub Studios and will be published under Freedom Games. As mentioned, this is their first title from the team of three. If you're starting to watch this or maybe you've already seen before, you know, some trailers or some information already on the web, I've noticed people always comparing this to Project Zomboid and I guess the devs will have to live with that. I mean, there are certainly similarities and with just such a big and overwhelming positive title like Project Zomboid out there, it's natural for people to do this. I asked Yoz, one of the developers, about it and his response was that everyone is welcome to their opinion. Though he only noticed Project Zomboid after they started with development and he then bought the game just to see what all the people were talking about. So as much as the Project Zomboid similarities are there, they apparently made a game that included what they liked most from their favorite PvE and PvP games such as DayZ. So the top-down view 360 degree camera and movement system is nothing like Project Zomboid. The game is effectively a PvE experience but with friendly fire. When released, the map will be around about 16 kilometers squared, which I believe is about six square miles. So certainly not too shabby at all. I've been playing the limited demo, which has been made available for some time now. It is quite an old demo with bugs, but gives you a pretty good idea of what the game will be like once it releases in early access, which should be hopefully very soon if you go by their Steam page. Right, so what are we expecting from Human at Z? Currently you can choose set character skins, but you can also choose the perks like farmer, fisherman or amateur boxer, which gives you, in this case, more hand-to-hand -hand combat bonuses. When I played, I tended to go with farmer as this was a limited demo and I wanted to make sure that I had no issues with food. As mentioned, the game is top down, but has the ability to move around 360 degrees by pressing the Q and the E keys. As you enter buildings, the roof will disappear from view. If you're not used to this, it can take some getting used to. It's a bit of practice and you shouldn't have a problem after a while and you should be more comfortable. The plan is definitely to support controllers and consoles, however right now it is basically a PC game with keyboard and mouse. There are many small things that I already find are standing out. Just take cutting down a tree, the solid clunk, clunk and animation really show you and make you feel like you are cutting the tree down. Small things like eating an apple or drinking a bottle of water has associated animations and sound effects. Various weapons like a number of different animations to add to their realism. Like they distinguish between a sniper rifle bolt action shot to a pump shotgun being pumped when you reload the shells. It all adds that immersion to help the game just a little bit more. The environment so far in the early demo is pretty absorbing. I have enjoyed the thunderstorms and the rain pummeling down on you. It is noisy, difficult to hear anything above the racket, but certainly puts you in that environment and you feel like it is a real thunderstorm. You can't hear the zombies above all the noise and you keep looking around expecting to be jumped. The environment looks post-apocalyptic with the rundown smashed and weathered buildings and vehicles. Exploring is key in the world and you spend a lot of time looking through vehicles, smashing some of them up to get scrap metal and digging around buildings. Of course, this is a zombie game and there are various different zombies. Different types can be stronger and more deadly. There are those that are pretty slow, but then there are others that suddenly take you on and surprise you by chasing you down with superior speed. There are wandering hordes that rock up now and then, and some areas that have different zombie densities. To help fight against the hordes and to live longer, there is already a decent amount of crafting and base building. Limited crafting can be done on your person, with various simple options like an animal trap or a rain catcher. Within time, you can obtain various workbenches and tools to extend your abilities. Better tools, weapons and utilities to help you survive in this post-apocalyptic world. Of course, crafting would not be great if you didn't have the base to house up and to protect yourself with. Currently, there are walls, barricades, gates and various base parts that allow you to either build a base from scratch or construct and adapt an existing POI. 
As you progress and increase your level, you can add points to your combat and general survival skill tree. This feature is not implemented in the old demo yet, but you will be able to increase your weapon abilities, melee skills, and other general skills and abilities. Overall, making you more efficient with your tasks and actions. Currently, there are around about 10 different vehicles that you can drive as a player. Different vehicles can affect storage, speed, and durability. In the demo, you start off with a small SUV, but I intended to just go and leave that behind without worrying about repairing it and go and find a 4x4, which had a much larger storage capacity. Driving so far is pretty easy and the controls are responsive. In the demo, you can repair a vehicle with the repair kits that you find or you can craft. Fishing is currently an interesting mechanic. Once I found a rod, I also required baits, something which you could go and find in nearby shrubs or small little tiny trees that you would harvest. Bait is automatically consumed from your inventory. You cast the line and then start reeling in, or you wait for the fish to bite. The tension on the line is indicated by the 360 bar. If there's too much tension that is put onto the line, once it reaches its maximum level, there's a very good chance that the fishing line will break. So you need to negotiate with the line tension and hopefully you get it onto the land without breaking the fishing line. Finally, besides zombies, you and your team will also have to contend with other NPC survivors or bandits. There are NPCs that are harmless, while others do want you dead. They can have bases that you can raid and subsequently take over, and possibly even call your own eventually. In the demo, the bandits have automatic guns, but are not too difficult to take down. The introduction of bandits that shoot back means that you now have to change your tactics, and it was quite fun to figure this out, especially with the rewards potentially being greater once I had my first kills and was able to loot the camp and the bodies. There will be a huge number of changes coming up and updated features once Human at Z releases in early access. So the old demo does give a pretty good idea of what to expect and I look forward to seeing this on the Steam store for purchase hopefully very soon. If you think this is your cup of tea, then I would suggest head over to Steam and give them a like by clicking that wishlist button. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you in the next one.